Today marks the anniversary of what I would consider the best experimental aircraft, at least over the last two and a half decades, the Lance Air 360 Mark II. And even if you don't care about airplanes, you'll most likely recognize this airplane as it is possibly the most iconic experimental aircraft in existence. And we have Lance Nybauer thank for this revolution in aircraft design, which is all quite remarkable considering his questionable choice in shorts and tube socks. In fact, it is so beautiful that it hung on display in the New York City's Metropolitan Museum of Art. Prior to this, airplanes looked like pimpled spam cans that were put together with sheets of aluminum, hammers, and a series of pimple-producing pop rivet guns. As you can tell, my opinion is completely unbiased and therefore dispositive. There were a few other composite designs that were being produced at the time of the Lance Air 360's production run. One of these utilized a canard, and it didn't have pimples to its credit. But, quite frankly, no one could tell which end was the front or the back. Observers often thought these planes were flying backwards, and while some of these models had a retractable tail wheel, or nose wheel, depending on your perspective, they left the water skis, or upside-down flags, out in the wind. More on retractable landing gear later. Because these planes had a tendency to fall over on the propeller without a pilot in them, they had to be lowered to the ground when parked. This again caused more confusion on whether the plane was a tail dragger or a nose gear. People often wondered if it could fly the other way if it had a beta propeller. So let's talk about takeoff performance. Let's bring this to a stop. Let's go ahead and put on the fire. We are going down this runway, baby. Oh yeah, baby, we're in the air before the TBM. Good, uh, TBM taking the active runway 24, the short back taxi for full-length takeoff.